Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with a doubleheader, 2022 Topps Chrome Baseball doubleheader break. Let's play two, as Ernie Banks would say. Two hobby cases, that's 24 boxes total. And we know about those extended uh, short print, extended base short print situation, those five cards that weren't in this stuff. They're now been distributed inside the silver packs. You saw us do those silver packs uh, earlier today for the, for the new release breaks, for the breaks we did earlier. So at the end of the break, We'll do a pack per box. And obviously, if there's any of the short prints in there, that'll go to uh, the respective teams, the five teams that have those special short prints. All right, so we'll do those silver packs at the end of the break. All the other base cards that are in there will be distributed to the teams as well. So it'll be just like, it'll be part of the break. It's a break. Big thanks to, big thanks to nobody. No, that's not true. Big thanks to this group right here for making it happen. Thanks to the people who bought their spots straight up. And congrats. We only had to do one filler for this. Thanks to the people who took a risk on those fillers. Congrats to the winners. And there are all 30 teams in. Let's roll it. Randomize it. Names, teams. One and a four, five times. One, two, three, four, and five. After five, we got Michael down to David. One and a four, five times for the teams. One, two, three, four, and five. After five, we got the M's down to the Buckos. We'll see the Mariners in the playoffs. That should be pretty exciting. And so, Michael, look to the end of the video. And we'll see if we get, get you any of those short prints. Carl with the Brewers. Jason, you got my Dodgers. Michael with the Orioles. Darren with the Yankees. Sean with the Rockies. Jose with the Blue Jays, Steven with the Rays, Jan with the Guardians, Paul with the Rangers, Sean with the Marlins, Jimmy with the Giants, Stephen K with the Phillies, Chad with the Cubs, Tana with the Nationals, Simon with the White Sox, Carl with the Diamondbacks, Last Spot Mojo and the Tigers, Tommy John with the Braves, Carl with the Red Sox, Jimmy with the Royals, Derek with the Padres, Andrew with the Mets, Travis with the A's, Ethan with the Twins, Tana with the Angels and the Astros, Mark with the Reds, Tana with the Cardinals, and David Nadler, Pittsburgh Pirates. Let's alphabetize by team. And we're going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades. Uh, and then we'll have the break. Cubs up for trade, A's up for trade. So we'll see you on the other side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Look at that. There was a deal done. Trade win is now closed. So Chad is out of the Cubs spot and now into the Brewers spot. So we'll put a T there for trade. Carl is now out of the brewer spot and into, and try to try that again, cut and paste into the Cubs spot. We'll put a T there for trade. Otherwise the list remains the same. A lot of trade chatter. That was the deal that got done. All right. Hopefully you'll keep me company in the next two hours, ladies and gentlemen. This is gonna be a long break. We will do an autograph recap at the end of the break. So if you're re-watching this video and you're like, man, there's no way I'm watching this break. Even if it's at 2x speed, which you can do, then you can for fast forward, down, scroll, uh, scrub through the video and go all the way to the end and you'll see, uh, you'll see the autograph recap. Unless I forget. If I forgot, then I'm sure I did it in a separate video. Um, Chrome Hobby boxes, two autographs per box on average. It's a little slippery here. Good luck, everybody. Box number one. Oh, let's get the list. Again, let's show you that list just one more time. Topps Chrome Baseball, doubleheader, two hobby cases. Thanks, everyone. Let's take a little gold shimmer peeking out there. Um, what team do you have, everyone, in this break? And what are you looking for, if anything? Anything specific you're looking for, or you're just kind of just going with the flow? Just add some random stuff to your collection, maybe a, maybe a big hit. 
all cards shit in this too, right? They should, I believe. No, I'm sorry. No vet common shit in this, it says in the description. I think in the pick your teams they did. But no vet common ship in this, which will so just just the just the rookie cards, the refractors, the short prints, the numbered cards, the autographs, but the comments won't. Ah, Mark's looking for Hunter Greens. Those will be in the uh, those silver packs that we have. We're gonna do one per one per box. There'll be twenty four additional packs. We'll be ripping at the end of this break. Um, to look for those short prints. So that will be, I think, yeah, Mark, you and the Reds will have potential short prints, right? Who else is it? Julio Rodriguez is one. That's for the Mariners. Michael G. Look to the end. Jimmy K. with the Royals. Bobby Wood Jr. short prints. I think C.J. Abrams is also one of those missing short prints that are now in those silver packs. It's Derek and the Padres. So some possibilities there. Chad looking for a Yelich auto. That'd be pretty cool. All right, and away we go. Just in the interest of uh, just in the interest of time, I'm going to be breezing through these a little bit more quickly than I normally would. It's going to be a long break already. There's Jake Cousins for the Brew Crew. Chad drawing first blood in the trade. 474 out of 499. I almost kind of forgot what <laughs> what this chrome looked like. There's Wander Franco, Wander Franco insert. Uh, Stephen Carney with the Rays. Let's try to look for some parallels of that dude. And there's that gold wave I was looking at. And it's Brian Anderson. 28 out of 50. Gold wave for the Marlins. That'll be for Sean Maddock and the Fish. Our first autograph is... Oh, I thought it was an autograph, but still cool. Nice parallel. Let's get that dust off there. Wander Franco Fuchsia for Stephen Carney and the Tampa Bay Rays. 361 out of 399. We'll see him on the playoff stage. It'd be good for the hobby if he rakes in the playoffs and especially this weekend there's our second auto hans kraus phillies that'll be for Stephen k won that spot in the filler what do those fuchsia wander francos go for Does anyone anyone know i wonder if his his sort of longish injury in the season kind of softened that market a little bit but he still still one to chase. Here's Chad Dawes' favorite player, Kyle Lewis. Simon, what's going on? Don't follow baseball as closely. As football, can anyone tell me how the White Sox rookies Gavin Sheets and Berger did? Well, I think Gavin Sheets actually had a decent season. Um, I'm not sure about Jake Berger, though. Yeah, as a team, definitely fell short of uh, their expectations. As one White Sox fan put it a while back, I was like, does Jake Berger deserve a signature burger at, at the ballpark? And this White Sox fan piped up and was like, no, he's not hitting not nearly as well enough to get a signature burger at the ballpark. So no Jake Burger burgers just yet. I think Gavin Sheets did okay, though. Well, I guess this might be one of our last times that we're going to have a chance to talk about the off season because this is an off day and we're going to be uh, we're going to be pretty much talking playoffs the rest of the way through. So, yeah, Antonio Russa retired. 
So what? Let's talk about the non-playoff teams. What? Who's the biggest disappointment this season? What's the team that you thought, man, this team's definitely a playoff team, possible division winner, but just fell short? Let's see. AL East, Baltimore, Boston. I feel like the Orioles, who finished above 500, are actually the surprise right there. But yeah, Boston's got to be a little disappointing, right? Sorry, Mar Mark's Red Sox. 78 and 84. Look at that roster. They're really good. Made a big offseason splash with Trevor Story. You know, they got Danner Bogarts on that team, Rafael Devers on that team, JD Martinez can still rake. You know? And just my daughter's bias. I'm a fan of Verdugo, fan of Kike Hernandez. Those guys are solid, solid players, but more Chris Sale troubles and some pitching starting pitching issues, and then that's that's all she wrote. In the AL Central, it's got to be the White Sox, right? We were just talking about the White Sox. It's got to be the White Sox. Tony La Russa is out. You know, maybe they'll find like a, a younger voice, I don't know, to lead that sort of younger team. They're pretty disappointing too. On paper, they're really good. They've got a good pitching staff. They got good hitting. They got Luis Robert. But. Chad's in the AL West. That's got to be the Angels, right? Chad Da saying the Angels with, with guys like Otani and Trout on that team. And I know Trout missed like a month, but he still hit like he played a full season. So really, that's not an excuse there, too. There's a Glenn Otto Otto. Texas, that'll be for Paul and the Rangers. There's Jake Berger. Yeah, I mean, as as a neutral fan, I agree. I wouldn't I wouldn't have mind seeing a uh, Red Sox Yankees playoff series. There's purple speckle, little color match there. Colton Welker for the Purple Mountains Majesty, the Rockies. Nineteen out of twenty nine. So there's both of our autos in the first half of that stack. Like maybe a little orange peeking down there. Another one of Chad Dawes' favorite players. Another Kyle. It's Austin Meadows. 12 out of 25 for the Rays. Stephen Carney. If you have any uh if you have any Kyle Lewis or Kyle Seeger cards or hits in your collection, Chad Dawes a buyer. Be sure to hit him up every time you see him in the chat. We'll take a look at every one of those. Make some really good offers too. What about in the NL? Miami a little disappointing, I think. I don't know if they were gonna make the playoffs. Playoffs? But <laughs> right, only the best offers for those guys is Chad. Uh, he actually hates those guys. Don't don't bug him. Um, I think Miami. I didn't think they were going to be a playoff team. I also didn't think they were going to lose over ninety games. They lost ninety three games this season. Now I know that that's like kind of like the AL East, like Gilo was saying. I know that the NL East is also pretty tough, but. Got a really good pitching staff. Well, actually, they have a really good pitching staff, but I guess that was it because remember that that run of that run of the Marlins not scoring more than two runs in a game for like two weeks, two or three weeks. But they actually had like just a shade under 500 record or something like that. that's just a testament to how good their pitching is. <laughs> but. Yeah, a pretty disappointing season for the Marlins. But that incredible pitching staff, that plays. So I wonder if, uh, you know, they should try to make them. I mean, people want to go to live in Miami, right? Players want to try to get some, try to get some boppers. 
What if Aaron Judge goes to Miami? What if Aaron Judge is like, I'm going to go to South Beach. Sign a 10-year deal there. Kick back and relax. Have the Marlins bring in, bring in, a, bring in the fences. Just rake. Yeah, Aaron Judge, the decision. That's going to be the big decision. We'll have plenty of off-season to talk about that. Or I guess as soon as, you know, as soon as uh, the Yankees are bounced in the playoffs, whenever that may be, you know, they'll, they'll be, the, the talks will start. Cutter Crawford, Boston, that's going to go to Carl and the Red Sox. Yeah, Simon's, Simon's asking, yeah, well, let's start it. <laughs> Where is Judge going to go? Where, 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 what does everyone think? And if you're feeling spicy, it's Casey Mize, Fuchsia Speckle for the uh, Tigers. That's for Carl. If you're feeling spicy, what are the terms of his deal? Maybe $350 million right there to three fifty. There's Wayno, 241 to 299. That's for St. Louis. That's going to be for Tana. Stephen Carney will get the all those Wander Francos. And Mason Jar Thompson. Rookie autograph for Tana and the Nats. Think he's going to get one of those deferred deals? I mean, maybe for the Nationals. You're not going to defer this, this dude, are you? 10 years, $500 million, Rex is thinking. This card really isn't <laughs> worth that tough, but we're talking about him, so. Um, someone gonna, is someone really going to give him 10 years, you think? He's a little bit older than... He's a little bit older than you think. Right? He was born 92. I think he's pushing, I mean, for baseball, for athletes, he's getting a little older. Um, Ten-year deal pushes him into, like, the early, his early 40s or something like that. It sounds like an angel. Well, if they get new ownership, that's not, that's not what new ownership's going to do, I don't think. But, what if you did, like, a... But is that average annual value right? Maybe $50 million a year? Could he get 50 mil a year? Yeah, baseball money can get kind of crazy. Yeah, I can't see more than like max seven years for, for a player of that age. Pools is 42. I mean, not everyone's Alva Pujols. It's like, Rex, when you're like, you know, Nolan Ryan used to throw 110 pitches a game. You know, it's like, well, not everyone's Nolan Ryan. <laughs> and as special as Aaron Judge is, he, he has had, he has, he's been pretty healthy the last couple seasons, but he has had, you know, some, some injuries. I know, no. Yeah, that's why a hot dog and a beer cost thirty dollars a game, right? Not even good hot dogs or a beer at that. 
watered down Miller Lite. You try to get premium food at a ballpark and a lot more than that. Yeah, I could see clubs wanting five years, but I think Judge will probably want like seven, eight years, maybe 10 years. They're gonna have to meet somewhere in the middle. The higher average annual value is probably, it's gonna be one of those, that's been, that's been increasingly a popular, let's see what the Mets did with Scherzer. I think that kind of deal seems to be, excuse me, growing a little bit more popular these days higher average annual value, but shorter years. There's Yohan Moncada, 93 out of 99. So I think teams are gonna get a little creative with that. Yohan Moncada for the White Sox, that'll be for Simon. There's a Hyper O'Neill Cruz, I like that for the Pirates. Oh, a, that's a Wander Franco, I thought that was someone else. Eight years, 320 million, thinks Lucas. It's $40 million a year, that's, that's not bad. That's a fair offer. But is someone gonna give him, someone gonna give him more than that? Aaron Judge is 30 years old, turns 31 next April. By the, by the beginning of the baseball season, he'll be 31 years old. Now here's a fun thing that I look, like to look at. If you go to Fangraphs.com, you uh, search a player, you scroll all the way down to the bottom to the value section. Um, they they kind of calculate based on WAR, based on salaries of of players in the league. They try to calculate the va the dollar value of of someone's season. There's Trey Mancini, nice Trey Mancini, two ninety nine for the Orioles. Michael Losia with that. So based on war and average salary per per war, per point in war, there's JT Real Muto for the Phillies, Stephen K. Uh, Aaron Judge in 2022 had a season that, that would have been worth $91.6 million, $91 million. So after calculating a million dollars, like the price per, per war, Wins above replacement, and he finished with 11.4 according to Fangraphs. It would have been a now. No one's going to pay him 91 million dollars, obviously, you know, because he's had a season with one war where he, where he was only worth 8.2 million dollars. Last year he had a good season, 5.5 war. That was a 43 million dollar season. T.J. Friedel right here. So you kind of kind of have to get somewhere somewhere in between there, right? You're paying forty million dollars a year of real real dollars. Sometimes you'll get ninety million dollar value. Sometimes you'll get eight million dollar value. So it'll be interesting. T.J. Friedel for the Reds. That'll be for Mark L. Tanner John thinks that uh, John thinks that somehow the Giants are going to pay him some outrageous amount. A lot of a uh, lot of connecting of dots to uh, to San Francisco. Obviously, he is from that area, from Northern California, maybe closer to the center of California. I want to say, be closer to San Jose, but still, I probably grew up a Giants fan. Um, And the Giants have been, you know, I've been reading some some articles. Giants have been, uh, and their fans have been sort of clamoring for some star power there. And they've got a pretty interesting team. And if they can keep, uh, if they can keep the pitcher that Carlos Rodon, I think. If they can keep him, there's Logan Webb's pretty good. They've got some youngsters coming up the ranks. They've got some veteran talent there. If they could stick a bat like Aaron Judge and his star power there in the middle of that lineup, that could get the people going. That can get the fans going. 
So a lot of a lot of dots being connected all the way to the bay, to the bay area. There you go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So John, you know exactly where that area is. Yeah, watch you play at Fresno State with your dad when you were little and grew up around where you're at. Yeah. So not not exactly the bay. Not like not like Tom Brady, who grew up in a fancier part of uh, fancier part of the Bay Area. Um, where did Aaron Rodgers grow? Up? Did he Aaron Rodgers grew up closer to Sacramento, right? Simon Simon Meyer has a hot take. Pools this season might have been more impressive than Judge, just given just given Albert's age. And he certainly, he certainly turned back the clock. There's an article in The Athletic that said he kind of credits, you know, that move to the Dodgers that kind of rejuvenated his career because he started hitting some dingers with that second half of that season with the Dodgers after the trade. It's Patrick Wisdom and the Cubs, Carl with the Cubs. That's the other side of the trade. So one auto each for, uh, for the trade. If you're keeping score, I thought I thought Rogers was uh, I thought Aaron Rodgers grew up in Chico, California, which I want to say is closer to Sacramento. And I think um, and I think uh, Tom Brady's from Marin County, right? So just north of the Golden Gate Bridge, wine country. And a nice Nate Pearson. Purple refractor autograph for the Bluebirds. Jose with the Blue Jays. 95 out of 250. Tradiac, what's going on? I did not see the Ronaldo, the, the Cristiano Ronaldo miss as a non-United fan. It was pretty hell. No, I got to look that up. I'm sure I'll take some delight in that as well as a Liverpool supporter. Got Bobachette Green, 68 out of 99. Another Blue Jay for Jose. Oh, links don't work in the chat. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. I'm sure I'll run into it. I did not. Rex is saying, did you see Griffey Jr. sent Judge a message congrats and tell him to keep it up and Judge wrote back, thanks. Just trying to be like you. Maybe without the late career injuries, though. Not like that. All right, six boxes of 24. So we've got another half an hour left in this break, and we've got another hour after that. So let's see who makes it with me to the end. I might not make it. Hey, we do have another dual case break in the store, if you'd like. I'm not going to do that tonight, but I don't know. If Jason doesn't knock it out in the next couple days while I'm away, maybe on Sunday. There's a lot should be. I'm hoping, kind of pivoting to the playoffs a little bit, I'm hoping that we do get, um, we do get some, uh, can we imagine if we get all game threes? All deciding games all on Sunday? They're just banging them out Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Baseball, baseball, baseball. Playoff baseball is pretty exciting. Now we talked about what um, what people personally thought. Um, what they personally thought 
who would win uh, this, their respective series, but let's see what Vegas thinks. So Rays Guardians series price to win the series. Rays are plus 104. That's pretty much one to one. Bet $100, you get you plus $104 back. So if it's $10 and you, you, know, you can kind of see, you can kind of do the math there. So, but pretty much even. The Guardians are uh, slight favorites at minus 124, which means you've got to minus $124 from your bank account to plus one hundred dollars, so you got to lay a little more to win a hundred bucks. There's Anthony Rizzo, two fifty nine to three ninety nine. But ostensibly, you know, you're taking a bigger risk because there it's a bigger chance, I guess. There's Juan Yepes, Blue Lava for St. Louis. They're in the playoffs. Tana, fifty five out of one fifty. There is Alex Wells, Orioles. That's going to be for Michael Losia. Won that team in the filler. Gets the Alex Wells autograph. Not yet. We got that blue lava for the Cardinals, but nothing. Got that purple Nate Pearson autograph. Nothing too crazy, though. Maybe that fuchsia Wander Franco may still be some of the one, one of the bigger hits of the break thus far. There's Nolan Arenado to 99. Green Speckle for the Cardinals for Tana. Halfway through this first case, first of two. All right, next half. These are the box with the tops. Yes, that is correct, Tradiac. So we did get those silver packs in today. And we actually did a whole, uh, just for the previous Chrome breaks we've done, we did a whole rip of those packs uh, first thing today. So that video should be up. Basically, they gave us silver packs, and um, we're just pretty much, so at the end of this break, there's 24 boxes, right? So at the end of this break, we're doing 24 of those silver packs. Yeah, our sorting team loves these double headers. Hey, they've sorted, they've sorted bigger breaks than this, so. So this is relative to some breaks we've done. This is easy. No, no worries. Hey, listen, this is a long break, Tanner. I need as many uh, many things to talk about as possible. Otherwise, I might fall asleep in the middle of this break. No, but there's nothing for the Braves and the Silver. I mean, there may be some base cards, you know, that you know really aren't worth all that much. Maybe a refractor or two of some players. Maybe a Spencer Strider ref rookie refractor. But the only teams that have a stake in those um, those those uh, those silver packs are the extended base short print set, which is only five players. So when so the whole drama was when when they first released this, you know, they they realized and announced that hey, uh, the, on the factory level, you know, because it's kind of it's not like tops employees doing this, but at, these are printed at a separate factory. So at the factory level, they forgot to insert the extended base short prints which feature five cards. Bobby Witt Jr. for the Royals, Julio Rodriguez for the Mariners, Spencer Torkelson for the Tigers, Hunter Green for the Reds, and C.J. Abrams for the Padres. So they don't have regular base cards, so they're only those extended base short prints, those special players. So 
they're never inserted in these stuff. So what they said as a, uh, you know, they were like, well, I mean, obviously we have to give those to the people, right? So they created these silver packs. Right there, they created these silver packs. So in these silver packs are just uh, the usual set of chrome cards, right? But finally mixed in there are those short prints. Obviously not every case was guaranteed a short print because they're short prints. So not every pack's gonna have a short print, but that's what we're chasing. There's Ivan Castillo. Have I hit refractor versions of those short prints? I honestly don't remember. That video is up, if you want to take a look. And we've got an Aaron Nola piece of his jersey. So yeah, for, for most of you, you're just going to get maybe, I mean, vet commons don't ship anyway. For most of you, you might just get like an extra base rookie or something random like that. DJ LeMay who blew waves to 75. But really the Royals, Mariners, Tigers, Reds, and Padres, they'll be they'll be a little their ears will be perked a little bit more because of the possibilities of those short prints. Got an Alexander Wells, photo negative. I wish these were short printed a bit more. Those they can almost be like downtown cards. There's Spencer Strider. Some of you know Strider as a, as the Ranger from the North. If you're into that sort of thing, uh, that goes that goes to Tommy. And the Braves. That's that's uh, your possible NL Rookie of the Year. He's had a, a pretty great season. I think he's a little banged up, though, for the Braves. I think he's working through some sort of uh, some sort of oblique issue. Oh, I see. Per box thing, yeah. I mean, what do you? I mean, I'm glad they, I'm glad they addressed it. They could have given us nothing at all. I don't think there was ever going to be a solution that, that made everyone happy. Short of, but I mean, you can't even guarantee short prints for everybody. That be people would say there's no really perfect solution. It's not like you were or sure these super short prints anyway. So. Um, so it's not like we can just give everybody a short print. Everyone got one that devalues the short print, so they're not as special anymore. So yeah, there's really no there's really no perfect way of doing it. Uh, yeah, it is early. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a long break. We can definitely shift uh, shift sports conversations too. For for whatever it's worth, at the moment, five thirty eight does a pretty good job with their sort of projections, um, or at least they got a good system for it just so we have a framework to talk about. Right now, the Bills um, have a 19% chance to win the Super Bowl at this early stage of the season. 
Next closest is Chiefs at 13% to AFC teams. And the next two are NFC teams. Eagles at 12%, Buccaneers 7%, and Packers tied, tied with the Buccaneers at 7%. So now, obviously, with only 17 games, those those percentages could drastically change with a, a short winning streak or a short losing streak from any of those teams here and there, and that's that, right? There's Luis Gill for the Yankees. Ra Raiders, um, not as bad as you think. They are uh, at 0.6 percent to win the Super Bowl. Their playoff odds though, are 21 percent. I think beef, when they were 0 and 3, I think it was like 12%. Yankees, Darren, not that I've been looking. <laughs> not that I've been keeping track of that obsessively. Rex wants to know where, where Wilson Contreras goes. In. I think he's a free agent. But yeah, Bills are pretty scary this year. Mark's still on AFC East, still on the Bills. Patriots making the wild card, and that's bold. Without Mac Jones, how long is Mac Jones out? There's Francisco Lindor to 299. Bailey Zappi. For the Eagles, I mean, it's all about. I mean, they yeah, they look they look really good. They've got a pretty easy schedule. They just gotta they just gotta stay healthy. That I mean, keys to winning, right? Good offensive line, a young mobile quarterback that maybe doesn't have to throw so much because their running game is so good. Patrick Wisdom to one fifty for Carl and the Cubs, and a, and a really solid defense. if not great defense. It's a pretty easy NFC East, although Cooper Rush and the Cowboys have been pretty, uh, have been pretty uh, surprising. I mean, it's the National Football League. They're not going to go 17 and 0. They're going to they're going to have a couple of games where where you're completely like, oh, that's not a Super Bowl team. But so far, four games in, they're looking good. Who do they play this weekend? Jaguars, maybe. Oh no, are they playing Arizona? Luke still has hope for his bolts. Bosa, Keenan will be back. Slater has a chance to return. They gotta, they gotta, they gotta keep Justin Herbert clean, though. Arizona's the first playoff team. Is Arizona a playoff team? First playoff team the Eagles will face this year. The two and two Cardinals. Are they making the playoffs? They've got a good chance. They got a 37% chance of making the playoffs, 2% chance of winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, that Bills defense though is pretty electric. Von Miller just opens, you know, opens the door for everybody else on that team. Ed Oliver, Rousseau, great offense. You could, I, you, you want a little bit more, I guess. If you're nitpicking, maybe you'd like to see a little, a little more of a running game there, but, but yeah, they're still pretty good. Wait, so I don't really keep track of that sort of stuff, Mark. But is Brady and is Brady getting divorced? Is that true, or is that just rumor? Because that probably means we might see Brady for the next five years. 
That guy's never going to retire, huh? This one I thought we were going to get get rid of. Uh, this one I thought we we're going to get rid of Tom Brady. He's winning all the time in this league. There's a uh, Reaver San Martin for Mark and the Reds. They got lawyers. Yeah, Simon also confirmed that it's rumored they got lawyers. Wow. You think they signed a prenup? Like, she makes a ton of money. And I guess Brady has his share of endorsement money too, but I want to say Giselle has, maybe has more money than him. By a lot, I think. There's Ronnie Dawson for the Astros, Tana for the Strohs. I, th I think she does, Simon. That's what I was asking. Did he sign a prenup? Did she make him sign one? Got Luke Williams, 75 out of 150. TJ's already seen videos about people joking that Bray's got another 10 years if he divorces. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. No one telling him to retire? He'll, he'll just play until his arm falls off. He'll play until he's in a wheelchair. He'll play until he gets concussed out of the league. She does have more than him, Rex says, but does he really care? Seriously, neither of them could possibly go after each other's money. I mean, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know how, I don't know what a uh, divorce law is in Massachusetts. I don't know where they got married. I don't know what state they have their marriage license in. Every state, I feel like, is different. I think California, I think, is 50-50, unless you have some sort of prenup. <laughs> I had a funny image, Mark, of uh, Gronk and Edelman living in the Brady household's basement. You know, Uncle Gronk, Uncle Edelman, Uncle Julian. You know, Uncle Gronk, Uncle Julian, playing with the kids, taking care of the kids, doing babysitting. Letting them eat ice cream for dinner. And not that avocado ice cream or whatever he eats. Like real ice cream. Redemption. It's mm, beer. Seth Beer for Carl and the Diamondbacks. Last spot mojo. There you go, Carl. Oh, an O'Neill Cruz refractor. Pirates. David. The Buckos.
And we got a Romy Gonzalez. Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. Isn't that a movie? That is for the White Sox. That's going to go to Simon Meyer. Gold Wave, Corbin Burns, 30 out of 50. That's going to go to, to Chad Da. CD. What do you think? Uh, what do you think Chad Dawes' baseball nickname would be? That'd just be CD. Maybe he gets a CD. Maybe Dawes. Dawsy. Dawsy. I don't know if Dawsy works. Dawes. Maybe just add an S to there. Atta boy, Dawes. Yeah. Dawes sound. Dawes rolls off the tongue. Good eye, Dawes. Good eye. Maybe post game interview you go CD and it's like yeah CD had a really good game CD whatever his number CD seven CD CD three had a really good game what about basketball yeah We've got basketball preseason starting up who does everyone have uh, in hoops. Let's see. Do we have do we have some uh, more more recent odds on here? Maybe late September, according to Action Network. Your odds on a favorite to win are the Celtics. Yeah, plus seven, five seventy five. Celtics are your favorites, according to Caesars. Maybe a week ago. Followed by the Warriors at plus 600. That's about 6 to 1. Milwaukee Bucks, plus 650. Clippers, plus 675. Nets, plus 800. Suns, uh, plus 1300. Sixers, plus 1400. Nuggets, plus 1600. Lakers, plus 1800. Grizzlies are 20 to 1. Heat, Mavs, Pelicans, Cavs are 30 to 1. Hmm. Yeah, Mark, Mark and John, Celtics fans. I'm a Lakers fan, so I, I really don't need to see the Celtics win a, win a championship, but, the, but I can respect that team, though. That's a really good team. And here's another rival of mine, the uh, Giants, Kervin Castro for the Giants. That's going to go to Jimmy K. Yeah, Mark saying East got tougher though. Yeah, Cavs are thirty to one. If you like the Cavs, I mean, I'm not, I'm no good with these futures, but if you like the Cavs, you know, that's, I feel like that's pretty good return on the Cavs. There's Gavin Sheets, photo negative. Kevin likes the Timberwolves. They're, uh, they're right after the Cavs. They're plus thirty-five hundred. It's about thirty-five to one. Gavin Sheets goes to Simon and the White Sox. And we got Zach Lothar, rookie autograph for the O's. Goes to Michael Losia and the O's, refractor autograph, 309 out of 499. 
And there is Dodgers edition of Albert Pujols, 35 out of 299. So, Kevin, if you like the Timberwolves, 35 to 1 at Caesars. Last box of the first case. That's not so bad. This could be a nice little return. I don't know, any, any super long shots here that are that, that's worth something? The Jazz are the the Rocket Spurs Pacers Jazz are the are the longest odds. I think they're plus a hundred thousand. They're a hundred to one. <laughs> those three teams. I don't know if there's too much value in any of those teams. Orlando Magic and the Thunder are fifty to one, or five hundred five hundred to one. There might be five hundred one. I think the Rocket Spurs Pacers Jazz are a thousand to one. Magic and Thunder are 500 to 1. Pistons are 400 to 1. Kings 300 to 1. Wizards 300 to 1. Charlotte 175 to 1. Knicks 150 to 1. Trailblazers 125 to 1. I don't know if I'd take any of those. Just like, I mean, just for a value play. Bulls are 70 to 1. Is that an interesting value play? You know, if you're just. Throwing uh, 50 bucks on something. Just to, just to keep the season a little spicy. Hawks, 50 to 1. Raptors, 45 to 1. Kind of do like that Timberwolves, 35 to 1. Sixers are 14 to 1. They're right in between the Suns and the Nuggets. And man, the Sixers have got to get over that hump, right? I mean, if it's if it's not going to be my Lakers, eighteen to one. If it's not going to be my Lakers, you know, let's get it'd be good for the hobby. Get Joel Embiid, an MVP. Get him a chip. You know, get that locked in. All right, final box, case one, then one more case to go. There's Anthony Bender for the fish. That's going to go to Sean Maddock and the Marlins. Yeah, Bulls, 70 to 1. I do like that team as well. I don't like that Lonzo Ball may not start the season he's got he's got that foot injury or something like that if he was healthy if he was healthy they might not be they might not be 70 to 1 it's Gavin Sheets purple refractor 250 uh, that is for Simon. And there's Joe Musgrove, San Diego kid, in El Cajon. 277 out of 399 for the Friars. There's another uh, Wander for Stephen Carney and Derek. It's Lucas in the chat with the. Friars, there's Stuart Fairchild, gold autograph, Carl, last spot mojo. There you go, Carl. 16 out of 50. Yeah, John thinking, feel like, man, are the Sixers wasting Joel Embiid? Yeah, I mean, they got a. What are the Sixers doing? Anything significant in the offseason of the Sixers? I think they. 
He re-signed James Harden or did something with his contract. I don't see any new faces. All right, all right, so that was case one. Next case. Boom. Yeah, the Fuchsia Musgrove is nice. And uh, that's his hometown, that's his home, his boyhood club, as they say. The Padres, and it's fitting that he delivered the Padres' first no-hitter in franchise history last year. No, they, they, Seth Curry went to, Seth went to uh, Brooklyn along with Ben Simmons. So they got, according to ESPN, depth chart, they've got Tyrese Maxey at the point, James Harden at the two, Tobias Harris, P.J. Tucker, Joel Embiid. And then DeAnthony Melton, Shake Milton, Korkmaz, Matisse Teibel, those are some of your, your off the bench sort of guys. Yeah, I'm, I have to refresh my memory on all of the, the, the all of the, like the roster changes from this year. It might take me a month or two. Pelicans. Mark was saying Pelicans earlier. I do like that. Pelicans odds are not bad. Twenty-eight to one. A little bit better than the Cavs and the Timberwolves. Now Pelicans. They added once they added CJ McCollum. I feel like that really changed the nature of the team. They went to the playoffs. And, and with a Zion, they might have advanced to the next round. I really like this team. If they can kind of get it all to click, if they can put it all together, if they, if they can get a little production, some surprise production out of a, out of a, you know, a youngster or two, that could be really interesting. So you got CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram? That's... At the two, that's a big two. So, I mean, that'd be pretty, that, I mean, Brandon Ingram is not flashy, but he's just like, a, he's like Kevin Durant light. Cedar McCollum obviously is great. He can, he can be a great floor general. They got Herbert Jones at small forward, Zion at power forward, and Valanchunas at center. You know, then you got if you can if you can get some production out of uh, you can get Jackson Hayes to give you like 15, 20 solid minutes a night, Larry Nance Jr. to give you like 20, 25 solid minutes a night. You know, if you can get some some production out of Devonte Graham, Kira Lewis Jr. You know, guys like that. That could be. That could be a really uh, that could be a really fun team to watch. All right, there's another fun case to watch. Second case of our double header. First auto is Jansen Junk. You think he's a junk ball pitcher? Tana with the Angels. There's Giolito to 50 for Simon and the White Sox. Wander base card. And our second auto is a Luis Frias, Carl with the Diamondbacks. And 
once again, I'll do an autograph recap at the end here. Next box. Yeah, I don't, I don't usually remember a lot of the basketball trades either. And football trades, I feel like they're just so rare that that's why you end up remembering them. I don't know how much, how much hard drive space in our brains are we wasting on all this? No, it's fun. It's our hobby. How are how are the Lakers going to do, ladies and gentlemen? What do you think about Joe's Lakers, my Lakers? I don't know. It's all a moot point. It's all pointless if LeBron and Anthony Davis can't stay healthy, especially for if they're in the playoffs, especially playoff time. Our Lakers are in trouble. Yeah, it's, and it's not going to matter if uh, if LeBron James and Anthony Davis are, are out for a lengthy bit of time. I, one bright spot, though, is that I do like that that the uh, yeah anything's going to be better than last year. That the team's younger, you know. Like, we're finally getting Kendrick Nunn back on the floor. Dennis Schroeder back with the Lakers. He's, he's still pretty young. Austin Reeves I love. Juan Toscano Anderson. Damian Jones. Thomas Bryant are still pretty young. Wenyan Gabriel. Guys like that. Lonnie Walker are still relatively young. And um, I'm glad that... Because last year they were like, oh, let's get savvy veterans and let's put them on. And that, it didn't really work, you know? And the Lakers just end up looking looking slow and really old and out of breath and out of energy in the fourth quarter. A lot of leads lost in the fourth quarter. Um, and just lacking the energy to like maybe, you know, it would require Herculean efforts from like LeBron James to bring them back from like bad third quarters and stuff like that. So hopefully that kind of wild variance will even out. Obviously, you know, you, you can't really put too much stock into win-loss record in the preseason, but you kind of want to just see how players are rotating together, all the, all the different rotations. Um, for whatever for the preseason's worth, you know, Westbrook has, has actually looked a little more active on defense. Doesn't mean he's good, but he seems to be a little more of a willing participant, feeling he's, he's a little more aggressive to the basket and effectively aggressive to the basket. Like there are some more shooters around them. The coaching, I think, is definitely a lot better. No offense to Frank Vogel, and I think it's sort of unfair that that he that he got the axe, but someone had to go. But I think they made the right the right coaching decision. I think Darvin Ham will be will be a great coach for the Lakers now, and in the post LeBron era, whenever that will be, in three to three to five years. So there's something to be said about it, like maybe kind of keeping consistent coaching and you know philosophies on a team. So I'm hoping that that'll be the case for for Darvin Ham that he'll be here for a while. But the now, if the Lakers are 100% healthy and clicking, right, and playing a little defense, that's that's a championship team. That's crazy that it might sound, but the problem is, and a lot of people are like, yeah, right, Joe. Well, it's true. It really is. But the problem is, it's their margin of error, just like last year, their margin of error is really thin. Is really narrow. You know, so if, you know, one, one little injury from Anthony Davis that knocks him out for a couple weeks and next thing you know they're sliding out of a playoff spot and the whole rotation collapses because everyone's trying to fill that Anthony Davis size hole. Here's Mike Bowman, 13 out of 199. Orioles, Michael with Mike. 
So that's the issue with the Lakers. The margin of error is very thin. They can't afford to have lengthy injuries or can't afford to slack on defense. And it's Kyle Lewis to 199. That'll be for Seattle. Michael G with that one. But they're younger. They, they, they look a little more energetic. That I like. I like Austin Reeves a lot. He might be... The Lakers have, have done a pretty good job. Credit where credit's due. I know that they've, there's a lot of bad moves that they've made, like the Westbrook move, but... Credit where credit is due. Um, the Lakers have done a great job, and this is actually Joey, Joey Buss, I want to say. Uh, Dr. Buss's kids, Jerry, Jerry Buss's kids, have done an excellent job scouting. They, 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 they got Austin Caruso out of nowhere, Alex Caruso out of nowhere, Alex Caruso? I think Austin Caruso is one of our customers. I'm mixing them up now. Austin Reeves was an undrafted guy, I want to say. They found some second rounders um, that, that have been really great. So they've been really been able to identify some great talent. Because, you know, they've been trading away first round picks and stuff like that. So they've done, they've done an excellent job there. Um, guys like Scotty Pippen Jr. could probably make make the team, um, or maybe get some minutes in the G League team or something like that. They still have some future picks they're hanging on to. I think they're going to see, wait and see all the way until the trading deadline in February to see if they want to pull the trigger on using those picks. If the Lakers are looking good, if not, Lakers can keep those future those future future picks. Let the Russell Westbrook contract expire. Get that money off the books, and maybe they try to. Maybe they try to get uh, Kyrie out here to run with LeBron for one last time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's very, a real injury-prone team, John, so they really got to – that margin of error is really thin. They can't afford lengthy injuries. Yeah, I don't see – I don't see Coach LeBron, Rex. Well, he did announce – I mean, he did pretty much say, and he's had stated that I think he wants to be an owner. I think he wants to be – probably the face of an ownership group and, and run a team. I don't think LeBron himself could could buy a team, but but I think him and along with a, a bunch of other investors, I think, yeah, I think he can get a team. And I think he maybe said a day or two ago, maybe earlier today or yesterday, that he pretty much made a statement to NBA commissioner Adam Silver, hey, let's get a team in Vegas. And I think he maybe wants to be part of that ownership group. There's, there's AJ Alexi. I mean, it's looking like, and I think the, the rumors have been, it'll be when they expand to 32 teams, that it'll be Seattle will get the Supersonics back, and then there'll be a team in Las Vegas. And then I think that makes sense, because I think, I think Memphis has been playing in the West this entire time since they moved from Vancouver. They've stayed in the Western Conference, so they'll probably shift. They'll probably shift uh, the Timberwolves over a division, because the Timberwolves, maybe the Timberwolves, someone, definitely Memphis. Right, because Memphis, maybe Memphis and Timberwolves gets slides over, in, or maybe the Pelicans slides over to the Eastern Conference, or something like that. I'm look at these teams right here in the West. Those two teams might be it. So then that, that kind of geographically kind of balances things things out. But yeah, the Las Vegas LeBrons. Yeah, he definitely wants to be part of an ownership group, sort of Michael Jordan style. There's Hoy Park. For Pittsburgh, that's gonna be for David. And they'll probably, there's Trevor Rogers to 350, Fuchsia Speckle. And they've got, a, they've got a stadium, or they've got an arena there already. They've got in a, where the, the WNBA team plays and where the Vegas Golden Knights play. It's the T-Mobile arena, I think, that's right next to uh, Mandalay Bay. And right across the street, maybe across the street, Caddy Corner, to, uh, to the Raiders stadium. Leaves the same. So there's a nice little sports complex or a sports little... 
area there, but but so they can easily play there and maybe even look to build a new arena somewhere. A lot of space in Las Vegas. There's Emmanuel Rivera, 55 out of 99. Oh, here's a fun question that, that we haven't talked about in a little bit. Um, I think Major League Baseball, if we want to circle this back to baseball, I think MLB has, has been kicking around the idea of 32 teams. Where do those two teams go? I feel like there's been a lot of like sort of ac academic type studies done on like various baseball blogs about like, what market do you need to sustain a baseball team? You know, what's the demographics that go to base that go to baseball games and blah 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 and you know what areas you know have like a sort of empty space where that could be filled with a baseball team. Where does where does expansion team thirty one and thirty two go? And let's just let's just assume, for the sake of this discussion, that that um, that Oakland stays in Oakland, and I think they might actually. They, they've been making some progress on some land, maybe a little bit south of where they currently are, to redevelop some uh, some property there, maybe in a slightly nicer part of part of town. So I think they're making some progress on possibly a new stadium, and I think Tampa Bay really should move to I don't know I don't know what progress there's been there but I know that the commissioner has definitely said to Oakland and Tampa Bay figure this out <laughs> you know or we'll figure it out for you you know what I mean maybe force them to sell teams or something like that but um, Tampa should the Rays should really move to um, the Rays should really move to where the uh, to where the Lightning and the Buccaneers play. It's, it's in a much more easier, easier, easily more easily accessible area. You have to decide what two two divisions get extreme. Uh, no, you would change it to you would change divisions, Rex. That's that's what you would do. If you go to thirty two, then you're then you're redistricting divisions. Uh, like the NFL, eight divisions, four teams each. So I'd have to I'd have to kind of look at the teams and kind of shuffle that around. I don't know how the, the divisions would be reshuffled, but you would reshuffle. Uh, you would reshuffle the uh, division teams. Oh, we were talking. We moved to baseball now. But yeah, you would move like Memphis. If we're talking going back to NBA, you'd move like Memphis, right, Jay? You'd move like Memphis and like OKC to the to the uh, to the East, and then put the new teams in the new NBA teams in Vegas and Seattle. That's not the way they had it before. What with thirty-two teams? Oh, well, just just because, just because that's the way they had it before. We can't change it, Rex. That's it. We're locked into what what we did before. Now look forward, Rex. There's Royce Lewis, purple, forty-one out of two fifty. It's a it's a chance to uh, when you get thirty-two teams, it's a chance to redistrict redistrict divisions. So here's an old uh, New York Times. Or I'm going to drop that link in the chat. Here's an old New York Times article from 2014 that says, Up Close on Baseball's Borders. That kind of gets you a little map of, of the teams. So you can kind of get an idea of where, where another baseball team could be. That's right, the Colt 45. That's a great name. Maybe it doesn't play today, but I still like it. 
Trevor Larnock, Twins. That'll be for Ethan. Gets the uh, black and photo negative parallel. There's Oliver Ortega for the Halos. That's another one for Tana. I think the I think one of the one of the suggestions I've heard for a baseball team is well people have said Vancouver but I don't know I think Toronto Blue Jays is like Canada's team. I don't know if that's going to happen. If anything you put a team in Montreal. But obviously Montreal putting a team back there has been talked about. Portland has been talked about. There's a great Netflix documentary called the I think the Battered Bastards of Baseball. I want to say Kurt Russell or his dad or something like that had, had some involvement with that AAA team in Portland. It's a good documentary. But yeah, Portland's been talked about a lot. Montreal has obviously been talked about a lot. Um, people have said Memphis, but they got a football team, they got a basketball team. Can they sustain a baseball team? People have said Memphis, but I, I, Braves country is kind of strong in that region. So I don't know if that's going to happen. Because yeah, if you have Vegas, most likely, like, Oakland moves, right? Right. Right, because, I mean, I, I, I can't I, I can't. can't think Vegas would be would not be an expansion team. I don't think Well, even if, but even if it was, but you're not keeping Oakland, right? Eventually, like, they're just so bad, like, the attendance well, and everything. If they, if, they, that, if they get that new stadium, which well, they're yeah, making progress on it, true. then they might not, they might not even end up moving. If they don't move, then, yeah, Vegas would... Yeah, I guess Vegas would be a good candidate for baseball. All the pro teams are moving there. But if you look at that map, if you click that link in, to the New York Times article and look at that map, um, the Mariners, like yeah, travel is brutal. Yeah. Travel and football, NFL too, travel is brutal all the way up there because there's no other teams there. So if you can wrap, if there's like a Portland team there, then you've got like a little West Coast leg that you can do for baseball. You play the Mariners for four games, you play a Portland team for four games, and then, you know, there's not a lot of flying across the country and back and forth and stuff like that. Travel can get kind of brutal. But North, people said Charlotte, like North Carolina. Yeah, there's oh, like, yeah Memphis, Tennessee, kind of over there. Mm -hmm. Memphis could be possible too. Yeah, Braves country is pretty big. I yeah, Bra yeah, you can't put... See, that's pretty tough to... It's either Cardinals or Braves, right? Yeah. Memphis would have a hard time getting people in there. New Orleans? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, There's a lot of baseball players that come out yeah. from Louisiana. They go to, like, LSU has a big baseball program, so... It might be, might, might be a little too slow for, <laughs> for, for that... For that for that crew that I don't know it's the big easy right New Orleans yeah. kick back and drink and eat <laughs> eat some delicious shrimp yeah, I do like that and, and, and watch some baseball I do like Portland actually especially if they bring back yeah yeah Blazes yeah Portland actually could be good to create a natural rivalry like a geographic rivalry okay, with the mayor the dude sell the, the dude that still owns the Seahawks in Portland still get there right or did he sell I think so He's still there right what Seahawks ownership is still there, yeah. Tanner thinks what Mexico City would be. I mean, they love Mexicans love baseball. That'd be a good spot. They they love sports. I think I think NFLs wanted to put put a put a team. But yeah, I mean that the travel is brutal though. That's the thing. I think that's kind of like a holy grail international city, right? Baseball's talked about it. NFL is definitely talking. I don't know about the NBA, but I think NFL and NBA have definitely kicked around that idea. Or NFL and uh, baseball have kicked around that idea. Put a pro team in, in Mexico City. But the travel would be a little brutal. There's uh, Kevin Smith. What's the, what's the time zone in Mexico City? Time? It's only two hours ahead. So it's not like it's London where you have to go no, east no, and no. west. Yeah, no, You're it's still going north and south. Yeah. So like so hours wise, yeah, central time. it's miles wise it doesn't kill you, or yeah. miles wise it kills you, but yeah. hours wise no, it doesn't. No, it's two hours. So yeah, I mean I think it's three hours if you get to like Cancun down there, right? The Caribbean area, but that might not be. It might hours. be possible someday. There's you Darvish to one ninety nine. 
Albuquerque, they do have a triple-A team there, but... I was looking at that region, too, but I'm like, ah... Oh, but not enough people really there. there. It's hard. I mean, Diamondbacks have a hard enough time getting... And they've got a huge city there. They've got a hard enough time getting butts in seats. Albuquerque used to... May still have a nice triple-A team there. The Dodgers... The Dodgers triple-A team used to be out there before they moved to OKC. Indeed, I feel like that's too much Cubs country, right, Rex? Looking at that map, maybe, maybe a little bit of maybe a little. What, what baseball teams do people follow out there, Rex? Is it mostly Cubs? There's Michael Brantley for the Astros. That'll be for. Uh, that'll be for Tana. Cubs and Reds country, yeah. That's where, where, where Rex is at. Albuquerque might work. Probably the most famous because they're... That, that's true. Maybe maybe the Breaking Bad effect has uh, changed people's minds. I know there's a lot of... Uh, I know like some like like nature show production companies or like uh, extreme sports production companies. They've got, they've got like a presence there. So there is sort of like a... Hip, youngish sort of thing there. Oh, is that right, Stephen K? No, so no baseball team in Nolens. I have a friend who who recently moved to to that uh, to New Orleans. No horror stories just yet. Charlotte, I think Charlotte, Vegas, Portland. I think, I think those are those. If like baseball expands to thirty-two, I'm thinking Charlotte, Portland, or Vegas. I thought Nashville as well. They got they got the Grizzlies, they got the Titans, they got a they got the uh, the hockey team. So they got major sports there. Why not baseball? Baseball seems like it would be a fit, but is that too much Braves country? Because Braves pretty much dominate that that region. Or is it ripe for is it ripe for another baseball team? You know, just to kind of eat into Atlanta Braves market share. But again, I'm, I'm going to flip screens just for a second, but I'm looking at that map right there, right? Little little Braves country out there. But that that uh, Vegas, Portland, and uh, North Carolina area, I feel like there's, there's some market share to be taken there. I wouldn't say too much Braves. You put it right down in the middle of Nashville. Right, right, right. You'd, you'd have to make it like, you have to put it downtown. Wait, so that actually has me curious. Where do the... Uh... Where do the uh, Tennessee Titans play? Are they like right in the middle of the... Yeah, they're right in the middle of Nashville, right? The Titans? I'm assuming... Does Do the Grizzlies play around there too? So yeah, if you put it right smack in the middle of the city, right, 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 you know where the Titans play, yeah, maybe that could that could be pretty fun. Ooh, there's a Connor Seabold, Seabold, Beabold. Ah, and New Orleans can't keep a baseball. They they lost their Triple A team. All right. I feel like a lot of ball players come out of baseball players come out of like LSU, so I thought that might have worked. But uh, Carl with the Red Sox. We're doing a little thought exercise, Stephen K. We're saying what, uh, and I was kind of looking at this. This might be a little outdated. It's from 2014, but New York Times has like a little nice little uh, baseball map, little heat map of where all where fans are concentrated and, and everything. So we're trying to figure out if baseball expands to 32. Then let's say we're for the sake of argument, Oakland and Tampa Bay are staying in the same place. Um, 
What's a good spot? What are the good spots for expansion teams? I'm thinking Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm thinking Portland, Oregon. Las Vegas. And I think maybe John's kind of twisting my arm, kind of convincing me maybe, yeah, you do try to challenge that Braves market share. Pop a team in Nashville. You already got major sports there. Why not a baseball team? There's Brian De La Cruz, Sean Maddock, and the Marlins. Why not put why not put a uh, why not put a baseball team there? I mean, I feel like there's probably numbers that say that Nashville, one of the fastest growing cities, and blah 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 blah. I'm sure they're on one of those lists. There's Garrett Cole, Fuchsia, Speckle for the Yankees. That will be for Andrew Mark. Nope, that's going to be for Darren McKenzie to 350. We got our two autos. We're just looking for special cards here. Low numbered cards. We still got those silver packs. Don't forget about those. Kiebert Ruiz to 199. Former Dodgers prospect going to Tana in the Nationals. Halfway through this final case, the second case, about 30 more minutes to go. Thanks for hanging with me, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate you keeping me company. Otherwise, I may pass out in the middle of this break. Where's Carl? Is Carl still here? He's the one that really kickstarted all this. He, 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 yeah, he's, sleep, he's sleeping. He got the last four full spots, which made everyone get the filler. Carl, are you still here? The Carl checked. Yeah, that's right, John. The Braves had that spotlight for too long. They've got they've been they've been comfy eating that market share down there. Building generation generations of Braves fans. Let's 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 challenge them a little bit. Now, let's get Nashville in there. They already got the they already got you know, major teams there. You know, Titans have the Titans have been pretty successful. They've been in the playoffs and stuff. I feel like the Predator, Nashville Preds have been pretty successful, you know. Memphis Grizzlies are on the are on the up and up. I I don't remember when when did they go from thirty two to thirty? It must have been a long time ago. Probably just the usual issues: attendance, not enough people going to ball games, those cities not being able to sustain teams. Maybe not enough talent coming out of the pipeline to sustain quality teams. Leave my bag there for a while. Oh, okay. But you know, expansion is uh, you know you make more money. Look at look at the look at the cost of baseball franchises these days. Billions of dollars, two billion dollars, two point five, three billion dollars, maybe. You add two more three billion dollar teams in there, that's more money for the put in the pool for owners and all that stuff. There's all sorts of uh, you know tax money being thrown around, luxury tax money being thrown around. More teams to market, more teams for TV. It's like if you tell TV, hey, we've got more teams and more games. Guess what? The cost of, you, the cost of licensing has now gone up. <laughs> it's, all, it's always money, Rex. Especially in pro sports. Royce Lewis to 199 for the Twins. Ethan. Although I think baseball is not as close to 32. Um, not as close to 32 as uh, basketball is. I think basketball is... Many years ahead on getting 32 teams. You have to write a quick email. Can we pause the break? No, you can pause this video though, Lucas. If you're watching the live stream, either on Twitch or YouTube, you should be able to pause the video and they can get right back into it when you're done with the email. And then you can, you can fast forward through the slow bits and then you can end up catching up and make sure you're live. There is Peyton Henry, or Paton Henry. Don't know. Marlins, Sean Maddock with the fish.
Yeah, there is a lot of talent on NBA rosters. I think they can, I think they can sustain another two teams with 15 man rosters. It's Josh Hader to 199. Maybe even make. It, it, maybe even make uh, the the league a little less top heavy too. Might might create a little more parity that we that we see in like the NFL. Well, they they added the Marlins and Rockies in '93 to make thirty. Well, Expos they moved. Expos moved to they became the Nationals. I think it's been 30 teams for a long time. It's just there it's just that there's been some moves here and there, hasn't it? No, it was 28 teams. They went from 30 to 28. Because in 1988, there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams in the AL. It was just East and West, AL West. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams in the AL East. There was only 12 teams in the NL West. I don't remember that that long ago. There's only 26 teams in 1988? Oh, that can't be right. Yeah, there are only 26 teams. Hmm. So they were down to 26 as recently as... So in 93, that's when they added the Marlins and Rockies to make 28. Right, and then um, and then Diamondbacks and Rays were twenty nine and thirty. That's what it was, and then they moved Montreal to to uh, DC. There you go. All right, thanks, man. See ya. See you guys. Bye. So that's what it was, Rex. It was only twenty six teams as re recently as ninety three. So Marlins and Rockies once again got us to 28. Hey Joe, I don't know if Ezra mm -hmm. can announce the dumpster's full. Okay. So if you want to just leave your trash can on here, he said he would take care he of it. He would take care of it. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Wait, they didn't pick up today? It's Thursday. It's Thursday trash pickup, right? I feel like they'd be coming Thursdays and Fridays, depending on... Alright, depending on when they feel like it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That was 93, so when did the Diamondbacks come into play? 97? Ninety-eight. So in 98, they added the Diamondbacks and the Devil Rays. And the Expos turned into the Nationals in 2000. They were still the, they were still the Expos up until, 2000, up until 2000, early 2000s. Yeah, so I don't think they turned into the Nationals until a little bit... Maybe 2005? Really? There were Expos until 2005? Oh, no. Nationals was 2005. Yeah. So there you go. So... So now they're going to try to add 32. I don't know. Probably not. 
like I was saying before, it's the impression that I get is that unless something drastically changes in the, the MLB market, it's most likely we'll see Oakland and Tampa Bay either move. And if they move, that might, that might slow down expansion talk for a while. But if they get their stadiums in order and they, they stay, then I think expansion talk may, may start to increase. Um, you know, and all this could happen in the next 10, 15 years. I think the I think basketball's timeline I think is I think is much shorter. I think three to five years. I think they might want to try to announce maybe in the next couple of years, if not sooner. It's Griffin Jacks for the twins, that'll be for Ethan. You know, and then get that those wheels in motion and, and have new teams within a couple of years after that to get all, get all the all that stuff figured out. That that probably means like Will there be an expansion draft? There might be an expansion draft, which would be kind of fun. There's Rodolfo Castro to 299. Purple Speckle for the Pirates. That'll be for David. An NBA team in Paris. I, I did hear some of that as well. There's Ernie Clement to 399. It might be easier. You think that might be easier to put a NBA team overseas? Because if you think about it, NFL is tough, right? You're taking 52, 53 players nowadays, right? Plus a coach for every position, plus equipment, all that sort. Of, it's it's like a huge undertaking. There's Matt Veerling, purple speckle for Stephen K. Here's Ernie Clement to 399 uh, for the Guardians. That's going to be for Jan. So there's a lot of moving parts there. Baseball too. You know, 26 men on a roster, 25 of 26 men on a roster, a lot of coaches, bullpen catchers, gloves, bats, baseballs, extra gloves, bats, baseballs, uniforms, this and that. But like it's basketball, much smaller rosters. All right, there's only 15 men on a roster. So you can carry less, I think, and just a lot less gear. Shoes, uniforms, basketballs. All right, maybe you know, trainer, you can coaching staff, maybe a few people on a coaching staff, a couple trainers, you know, a couple, couple uh, press guys, PR people. Not really, not that much compared to like a football team. So like to move a team, like yeah, the, to maybe put a team in Paris, that's not as crazy as it as it as it may seem. Yeah, well, no, you cannot put a team in Japan. If it's another country, I, I think it's it's Mexico City. Outside of that, I don't think you can put a baseball team anywhere else. Look up how long it takes for a flight from New York to, J to Tokyo. Fourteen hour flight? So when do you want them to go to Japan <laughs> and play? I mean, in that Japan team, I don't know. It, I mean, it just it would just be crazy. I just wouldn't work. The players already don't like traveling across the country. I mean, what's that road trip like? Even if you got them all the way to LA and then send them to Tokyo, right? 
for for like the Yankees to work their way across all the way to the West, playing games on the road, then play what a four or five game series out there, and then come all the way back. You know, and try to adjust, you know, times and all that sort of stuff. No, they, they, they'd be crazy. Right, and the Japan League is popular enough where I don't think I don't think baseball needs a presence there. Major League Baseball doesn't need a presence there. If anything, you want that Japan League to flourish so you can have more Japanese players come to Major League Baseball. Um, Gabriel R at 68 out of 150. Cleveland, this is for you. On with that one. So yeah, if anything, Major League Baseball will put in money to support the Japan League out there just to make sure that they they continue to thrive. Yeah, well, basketball. I've made a lot of comparisons, Tanner, to basketball and soccer. And I think that's why basketball cards sell so well on a secondary market because of the global audience. Basketball is huge in China, basketball is huge in Australia, basketball is huge in Europe, obviously United States, you know, so it's 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 a lot more close it's closer to to uh, to soccer than people think. You know, and I think some of the terminology kind of translates too. You know, you you hear a lot about like the vocabulary is somewhat similar. You hear a lot about like Hey, here's a soccer striker who can play with his back to the goal. Where have we heard that? We can hear, here's, here's a center who can play with his back to the basket. You know? There's, uh, there's the triangle offense in basketball. And in soccer, they talk a lot about passing in crisp little triangles. You know, there's, so there's wings, wing positions in, in basketball and in soccer. So I think, and, and the sort of the movement of the game too, the free flowing movement of the game, I think is also, and the creativity and imagination you need, I think is also pretty similar in uh, in uh, in baseball or in uh, basketball. That is. So I think I think there's a lot of comparisons that are there, and in terms of global expansion, I think that's there too. That's why basketball is trying to think about. What do you guys think about? Uh, the in-season tournament, it's a lot like what European soccer leagues do. They have their regular league, then they have a mini tournament in the middle of the season or something, or throughout the season. You know, so, so yeah. Yeah, and, the, well, you're right, John. The, the simplicity of those two games, basketball and soccer, Makes it so much easier to understand it's for new fans, anyway. So much easier. NFL. Imagine not growing up in the NFL, and you just uh, and you just you know you're someone like you're a Frenchman that has never seen any NFL, and then you just turn it on and say, "Let's watch." I mean, try to explain all these penalties, illegal formations. Guy, one guy can move, but another guy can't at the same time. You're talking about false start penalties. You're, you're talking about how many yards can you touch a guy before you have to release, right? The five-yard bump rule. What's pass interference? Why is that a catch? Why is that not a catch? You know, I mean, imagine that it's just, that, that's, I really think the NFL needs to simplify, but that's a completely different conversation, but um, that I'm not ready to have this late at night, but. But if we didn't grow up with it, the NFL is really hard, <laughs> you know? And, and it's kind of slow. If you kind of think about it. Um, my sister and I, my sister likes sports a lot. I mean, she well, we grew up watching sports a lot. Um, she lives in Vegas and uh, we went to our first, we, we grew up in LA so we didn't have an NFL team. We, 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 going to NFL games was not like a thing for our family. A lot of baseball games though. Um, and she likes baseball. And she's been to a number of hockey games in Vegas, a lot of Golden Knights games in Vegas. And 
And so she likes the vibe of, of a hockey game. And then we went to our first um, NFL game together over Christmas last year. as uh, Raiders Broncos. The Raiders beat the Broncos last year. And this year too. Um, and she was like, she liked it, but she was just like, oh, this is way different. There's a lot of downtime. And I was like, yeah, you know, and I've been to enough, I've been to a couple of college football games and enough high school football games where you can kind of get the vibe of that. But even I was kind of taken aback. I was like, right, there's a lot of downtime. There's Adam Frazier for Seattle. That'll be for Michael. And you're like, right, a lot of TV timeouts, a lot of, a lot of standing around. And so... You know, crowds, and so you realize how much TV helps. TV really helps, and I think the end of the football experience a lot. It's Joe Adele, orange, twelve out of twenty-five. Stephen K, you did the Packy One Chip Challenge. My advice to anybody thinking about that is a clear no. It was so painful. Is that like a super spicy chip? I'm assuming. I'm not into the super spicy chip competition. I, I, I like my stomach lining. I like my esophagus. I like being able to, to have my taste buds intact. I enjoy tasting things. <laughs> There's Trey Mancini. No thanks on those, uh, on those things. And we've got Spencer Watkins. Just say no, says Stephen K. Where does it hurt, Stephen? Are your can can you taste anything with your taste buds? Is your is your esophagus burning? Has the stomach lining being torn out? The other end not not doing well. I mean, maybe if uh, maybe if I was. If I was doing some sort of uh, some sort of dietary cleanse, a system cleanse, maybe maybe I'd I'd, I'd try to do that. Maybe fast for a couple days afterwards. <laughs> Just drink liquids. Going back to basketball really quick, and it's a baseball break, but going back to basketball, uh, I've always thought that the NBA really should follow the European soccer model. So in the Premier League, there's only 20 teams in the English Premier League, and they play each other once, home and away. Um, so they end up, what, playing 38 games, I think, in a season. I really think basketball should do the same thing. Can you imagine if the NBA really just tightened, their, tightened up their season and just did one home and away game? which would probably be 58 games, I want to say. Right, there's 30 teams, home and away, but they can't play each other. 60 minus two, can't, they can't play themselves, home and away. So 30 times two, 60, 58 games, as opposed to an 82, it's still a lot of games, but cut it down to a 58 game season. You don't mess with records because, you know, the basketball is not really, really like a sport where you're counting like 60 home runs in a season it's just because there's so many volume of points. But it won't change the averages, so you're not messing with records. Maybe total point records. I, I, I don't think American sports, we, I don't think we can go that far in terms of relegation and, and promotion. I don't think, uh, you know, how many, there's barely any teams in the G Leagues. So it's just hard to kind of do that. But in terms of scheduling, if they just play one game home and away, so that's 58 games for each team, you have the in-season tournament, like a FA Cup or something like that, like a Copa del Rey in La Liga, stuff like that. Here's Mitch Hanniger for Seattle. That'll be for uh, Michael. And then you do, uh, and then you just do the playoffs, which is what most casual basketball fans want to watch anyway, playoffs. 
And you still have those. You still have seven game playoffs. You fix the load management issue. The 58 games is not a lot. So you know players are going to play pretty much all 58 of those games. And then you keep them fresh to, to, to make them look great. You, you, don't want, you don't want players crawling across the finish line after a long season. So you get healthy, top-notch players in the playoffs, which is what people want to see anyway. Boom. That's what I'd do. Owners may cry about loss of revenue, but just raise the prices. <laughs> you know, put 82 games worth of revenue, divide it up into 50-some-odd games. You get more eyeballs on TV, less basketball games, so you can increase TV revenue. Because now it's must-see TV. Here's the one time the Lakers are going to play the Nets or something like that. One time this year, home and away. You know, like, that would put, that would put butts... In seats. There's Michael Brantley, another one for the Astros. That'll be for Tana. So if I was basketball commissioner for a day, those are the changes that I would make. And then I'd put a team in Vegas and in Seattle. Last box coming up. Oh, poor Stephen K. Tongue burns, eye, eyes watering, stomach is in pain, nothing pleasant. I like spicy heat, but this is just pain. I'm not, I like spicy stuff too. I can handle spice pretty well, but there's a point. Yeah, promotion relegation, we were talking about this the other night too. Promotion relegation is really, is really a tough thing because uh, we're not equipped for it. And I think there's just too many pro sports there. Think about Think about, uh, you know, if you grew up in Liverpool and you're, you're a kid growing up in Liverpool, the only team you're following is Liverpool. That's it. Soccer is the only thing out there. And that's the only thing you're watching. So for me, if, if this Joe, Joe Los Angeles, I'm, if whatever, my, whatever my disposable income goes to buying sports stuff, hats and shirts and gear and memorabilia and tickets and whatnot... It's being divided up between the Lakers, right? LA Galaxy, the Dodgers, you know, Kings. So that, that's where all my money is being divided up. Where where is where is my my mental energy going on the uh, you know on those teams? It's going to different teams, but. people it's just one team and that's it so imagine if a hundred percent of your sports budget that's usually divided up into three or four different teams if a hundred percent of that and your hundred percent of your like mental and emotional energy goes into just one team and that's it Without even any other options. I know some people are like, well, I kind of do that already. I'm, I'm like a big, big baseball fan. I really don't watch a lot of basketball. You can still watch a little basketball in your team if, if your baseball team sucks or something like that. You're like, well, at least I can look forward to the NFL season or something. Watch a little bit of that. Not in Europe. I mean, you, you have access to other sports, but not at a big professional level. It's a level so because of that one sort of monopoly on sports, every town has has a club, a semi pro club, a club that can be part of the the tiers and the division system that they have out there, and that's decades and decades and decades, so over a hundred years in the making. And from the get go, they agreed to that when it was not really a professional sport. There's Hunter Green for the Reds. Nice. That's going to be for Mark. There you go, Mark. Orange parallel as well. Should be to 25. And we're going to open with those silver packs too. So you got a chance at maybe finding some uh, some of his, uh, his base cards, which are short prints. Yeah, the soccer pyramid is, is, is pretty amazing.
the only way it works because it's just been in the system for so long. Can you imagine telling like, you know, I don't know, Mark Cuban that your team finished in the bottom three, so you have to go down to a lower division and get rid of, not get the same TV rights money, not be able to get the same budget, not be able to get the same, not play the same teams. I could bring you the, the, the game day revenue and all that sort of stuff. No way. He could be like, F off. That's not going to happen. It'd be interesting. I think it could work on a collegiate level. Just because there's so many different divisions on a collegiate level. And, oh, that was the second autograph. That was Hunter Green and then Simon Myers, or Jake Myers was the second one. That's Houston. That'll be for Tana. But wait, ladies and gentlemen, there's more. 24 boxes, 24 silver packs. Oh, there's one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Twenty four boxes, one per box. That was the uh, the solution from Tops. So, the short prints, once again, those extended, what do they call them? Extended base short prints, which is, which is just five players. Bobby Witt Jr., Julio Rodriguez, Spencer Torkelson, Hunter Green, and C.J. Abrams never made it into these, into these boxes, unfortunately. So, they said, hey, what we're going to do is we're going to build these silver packs. There's going to be some extra base cards in there. Sometimes some other things, but extra base cards in there. It looks like there are four cards per pack. So we'll put some extra stuff in there, and we'll mix in those short prints that were, that were originally supposed to be there. We'll mix these in here. So you can think of it as... It's, it's like a, if, as if we got like a 13th, the 13th pack in a box. And that's where our short print possibilities are going to be. We ripped a bunch of these earlier today for the previous Chrome breaks we did. So if you're looking for that, that's the video. There's a video for that. So all the hobby breaks we did, all the jumbo breaks we did, and the other double header break we did, um, we opened up a pack per box for each of those. And uh, out of the dozens and dozens of packs we did, we, we did find a handful of short prints. I think it's not going to be perfect odds-wise, but I think it's... In fact, if anything, it might be even a little bit easier to hit the short prints than it was before. So, it's a give and take. It's not perfect, but at least we're getting access to those short prints. Probably better odds to get those short prints as well, frankly, with these silver packs. Just at a glance. All right, good luck. So it's just regular Chrome cards. And same deal, no vet commons. But we're looking for those players. So this is the first 12. Jazz Chisholm. Mm. One, two, all right. Nothing in the first 12. Second 12. luck. I 
Let's see, one at least, no? I mean, they're, they were never going to be easy to hit in the first place. But I would love to see one, but none. Thanks for watching, everybody. We made it. This is the end of the double header break, random team number two. Here's a quick little recap. Uh, we got another double header up on jazbeescasebreaks.com, and that also includes a, uh, a silver pack per box. So this was the first case. Had a relic in there, Aaron Nola. Not bad. Colton Welker. Wander Franco Fuchsia was pretty cool. And here was the second case, the one you saw more recently. Got the Hunter Green. That was nice. Some nice color there. Blue, purple speckle. That, that sort of aqua, cyan. Wave, orange to 25. Some purple. Some more wave right here. And we started off with some junk right there. And there you go. And then tons of parallels that will uh, that will top load and get out to you. That's it, boys and girls. We did it. That was the 2022 Topps Chrome Baseball double header break. Um, two hobby cases, random team two, break three in the store. Check it out on jazbeescasebreaks.com and let's knock out another couple cases. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.